Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. And uh, today is just a quick tutorial on picking the correct rotation order in Blender. In my last video, I showed you how to make a world bone in Blender, and we talked about the default bone setting rotation order. When a bone is created in Blender, by default, it's a quaternion rotation order. And you don't really want this when you're rigging characters, you really want it to be an Euler function. Now I know there are uses for quaternion, but every animator I've met will want to work in Euler. So one thing you run into with Euler is something called the gimbal lock. And to avoid gimbal lock, you can pick a rotation order, but sometimes it can be difficult picking. And I just want to go over that today. So I just want to show you an example of gimbal lock. If I choose Z, Y, X, Euler rotation on this bone here. So when I rotate the Z axis, that's fine. The bone rotates on that axis. When I rotate the Y axis, See how it's pulling that blue ring with it? That's because the Y is being calculated before the Z. Now I'll put it back to zero and watch what happens when I rotate the X axis. It's dragging both of the other rings with it. Now to see this rotation order on the gizmo, I'm in gimbal mode on transform orientations. So if you flip from global to gimbal, you can see this happen. So watch as I rotate on the Y. See how that blue ring slowly approaches the red ring? That is the Z axis and the X axis matching up. So right there, that's gimbal lock. Now I can't move in this axis here. I am locked. You're pretty much stuck with that. Now you can't really avoid gimbal lock. It's going to happen as you're animating. Uh, but one thing you can do is change your rotation order in a logical way to avoid that gimbal lock. So here you can see it here. If I rotate the blue ring, it rotates freely. The green ring pulls the blue ring with it and the red ring rotates all three together. Now, if I put this here and then I start to rotate this green ring, this Y axis, you'll see that again, I've locked these two axes up. So now I have no way to move in this axis here. Uh, and this is gimbal lock and your animators will run into it. And what you want to do is choose the correct Euler rotation to avoid it as much as possible. So let's look at a real example here and let's look at an arm. So this is an arm I just rigged up quickly. And you'll notice that the bones on the arm are all the same axes going down the arm. To turn on the bone axes, you're going to want to go to the armature properties panel and there's a little option here called axes that you can turn on and off. I've left all of these in quaternion, which is their default rotation order. And let's just go through them and pick a Euler rotation order for each of these bones. Let's talk about the elbow first. The elbow has a main rotation on the Z here. Most of the time, that's the direction the elbow is going to move in it's rarely going to do something like this on the X. It is a very weird movement for an elbow, and unless your character's arm is breaking, the animation team might not use it that often. Now, I do have this twist here, which they might use from time to time just to get a nice arm twist, um, but I still want this to be the dominant rotation. And that's the Z axis there. So what I'm actually going to pick for this arm is Y, X, Z. So Y, X, Z here, and I'll walk you through why I chose that. So when I move the Z axis, which is last in the rotation order, it's pulling the other two axes with it. And this is perfect because I want these to always move with this. Now, if I move the X axis, which is second in the rotation order, it's pulling the Y with it, which allows me to, no matter where the other two axes are, I can twist the arm. So if this is all the way down here, I still have the opportunity to twist the arm. I don't want to lose that ability in an elbow. Now again, most of the movements are going to be like this, and then they're going to be minor from here. So again, the idea of the rotation order is to try to avoid gimbal lock as much as possible while allowing the animator as much freedom as possible. For the wrist, I'm going to choose a rotation order of ZYX. 
and you'll see why in a moment the main rotation of a wrist is going to be this up and down rotation here. So that up and down rotation works really nice on the X because it's pulling the Y and the Z axes with it. So as you move it, it's going to pull those other two axes with it. The wrist isn't going to move side to side that often. And if it does, it's only going to do it by about 20 or 40 degrees. It's rarely going to get to 90 degrees where you'd get gimbal lock. So I chose Y to actually be my second uh, rotation order here because I want that twist while always having the ability to move in that motion, moving that back and forth. So I have my main motion, I have my twist, and then no matter where I am, I can always move the wrist from side to side. Let's go to the shoulder now. For the shoulder, I'm going to choose YZX. Now the shoulder has a lot more range than the elbow and the wrist. Uh, and even right here, you'll see that it's in a T pose default state. The first thing an animator is going to do when they get this character is pull the arm down. They're rarely going to have a pose that they're going to do in a T pose, and they're going to pull that arm down like this. Now, I want that to pull the other two axes with it, and you can see it pulling them here, which is exactly what I want with that arm, and that when the dominant X axis is brought down, it's bringing the other two axes with it. Now I can still have my nice twist here, and if I want to bring the arm up, I can. Now you'll see here that I am getting into a gimbal situation with these two axes here. So in the shoulder case, I may want to do ZYX. And let's try that out right now. So if I move the arm down and then I bring the arm up, see how I'm keeping that X axis there? And then I can always just rotate the arm back if I need to. So this might give me a bit more freedom the only thing here is I, I sort of lose that y-axis ability to twist. So this is an example where it's good to talk with your animator. It's good to try things with your animator and really get their opinion on it as well. Um, let's look at the head as the last one. For the head, I want to do zyx. And I'll show you why right now. I want the dominant axis to be the x, this up and down here. So as this moves down, it's going to pull those other two axes with it. What that allows me to do is no matter where this up and down is, I can twist the head like this on that X axis and I can move the head side to side. Now, even if I'm here and I'm moving the head here, I'm not going to gimbal till it's about 90 degrees. And this is a very awkward pose. Your animator probably won't put it into this pose this often. So the idea is that you can't get rid of gimbal lock. It's going to happen. But using smart rotation orders, you can avoid it as much as possible. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.